If you have an Etcher sketchbook or a Canvas sketchbook and you want to know how to decorate it, then this is the video for you. I make weekly art tutorials, paint alongs and vlogs. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing the do's and don'ts of decorating your Etcher sketchbooks. It's going to be real time-ish, it's going to be chatty and I'm going to show you the exact results as I go through. However, if you wanted a shortcut or you wanted a spoiler, here it is. I personally don't think that you should just paint on the cover as is. I think that you should either get gesso or watercolor ground apply it to your cover and do it that way so that is the crux that is the spoiler that is the main thing however if you want to see the results understand my recommendation and pick which one is right for you then stay tuned I recently created a video where I decorated the new Etcher everyday square sketchbooks and in that video or as a result of that video I got a lot of questions as to what you can do what you can't do people making some really great suggestions as well so this video is kind of tackling all all those questions and all those suggestions and going a little bit more in depth. If you would like the shortcut then be sure to check out the first video which I'll leave linked for you. So this sketchbook here, the bigger one, the B5 one, I've actually um, used this gesso primer. So it's quite rock hard. It's been gessoed for long, long, long over 24 hours. And then this one, I've put nothing on it. So it's still the kind of soft canvasy texture that it normally is. But what I thought may be helpful is that what I will do on one half of it is add this, which is the Daniel Smith watercolor ground. So it's transparent ground and I thought it may be helpful to just see how it changes the behavior of watercolor on it. The only caveat that I will give is that the instructions say that you should leave this for 24 hours and I'm not going to do that. The most I will do is <laughs> leave it on for a little while and then go over it. I have tried this before with, I think it was with gouache. And again, I didn't leave it, oops, let me clean my brush. I, did, I didn't leave it on for 24 hours then either and it seemed to have worked well. So that's the one caveat I would give if you're determined to use watercolour um, and you're thinking about getting the ground, just remember that I probably applied it for maybe like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, time will tell, before I actually went back and applied the paints. One of the beauties of gesso and one of the things that I, that really got me to enjoy this process was knowing that if I hated it, I could literally just go over it with the white gesso and completely cover everything and kind of start again. So that made this whole process quite enjoyable the first time that I did it. And I'm sure that the same, it will be the same this time. So I hope that brings you some comfort as well. I think for comparison's sake, I think... Um, it's completely extra. However, I will add like a little bit of watercolour ground on this bit as well, just so that we can see if you gesso and then add watercolour ground, does that make a significant difference to your results and your effects? I just thought that it would be helpful to answer a lot of the questions that people asked or perhaps people were wondering, for example, do we need to gesso at all or can we just work straight onto the canvas cover? All that and more we will discover. One of the things that I recommend, one, if you, uh, before you start off the gessoing process, and maybe in theory before you also start off by adding watercolour ground, if you are going to do that, it's helpful to get some tape and put it around your sketchbook. This is a helpful way of protecting the inside of your sketchbook, which is important whether you have yet to start it or have completed it already so what you want to do is have the sticky side so you open up the sketchbook and then you have the sticky side down and you just apply that along the edge almost as if whoops almost as if you were creating a piece of art on this very last page and you wanted a white border and what that's hopefully going to do which worked on my other sketchbook is just keep the inside of your sketchbook protected and catch any runoff paint or supply I was quite, quite generous when I applied the gesso the first time, so this definitely came in handy. You do it on one half and then you open up the front of the sketchbook and repeat the process. So the sticky side is on the outside, like right here. It's all sticky. 
The two sketchbooks that I'm using, one I have just completed pretty much and I'm going to do a sketchbook tour soon. In fact, I may record it as soon as we do the cover. And then the other sketchbook, this smaller one, is the one that I actually commenced for portraits. Step one, apply tape around the edges and then when you open it up, all of this should be sticky. Step two is decide whether you're going to gesso, use watercolor ground or use it as is. Even if you're not going to gesso, I do still think it's helpful to have the tape so that it doesn't leak into the pages on the inside. So this side here has nothing on it. It's just the normal cover. Whereas this side here has acrylic gesso on it. Gesso versus non-gessoed and see what happens. I'm gonna pick up some purple because that is the color scheme that I'm feeling at the moment. So this is some purple watercolor. Let's do the same on the non-gessoed side. It's a lot more absorbent, so it's not stretching at all. <laughs> where it goes down is pretty much where it just like the water control is a little bit harder on this side. And you see that on this side it goes a little bit further, whereas on here, it's not. So that's the first clear difference. You can cover the grit more on like the tooth of the paper, a lot more on this one than you can on the side that has gesso. So that's a positive thing, it's just the absorption. So I think here it kind of gets absorbed into, into the tooth of the canvas, whereas on here it kind of just sits on top a little bit. Not technically good or bad, just different. I guess it depends more so on the effects that you're trying to get. And in terms of mixing and blending, so I'm just gonna take some here. So blending on, on the sketchbooks that has no gesso, pretty much not happening. On this side, you can blend and you can also kind of lift a little bit. Just picking up some more paint. And as you can see, I put it down and I'm trying to just use some water to try and move it around a little bit and it's not moving. Whereas on this side, it can still move a little bit. This side, not moving. So let's take some more pink. First impressions, I'm not, I'm not really feeling the canvas alone side for watercolor, but never say never. See how it goes with gouache. So this is opera pink. Wow to be adding a fugitive color to a cover, but why not? And let's see. I mean, gosh, that color is so beautiful, so bright. <laughs> After all, it's just a sketchbook. So, wonderful. And on here, again, same. So it's kind of behaving the same way that it behaved with the watercolor in that I am not able to spread it. You can see, it's so not really able to spread it or move it much. Whereas on here, still able to. I just feel like on the non-gessoed side, everything's just looking a little bit gray, a little bit messy. Not, not really the effects that I would be going for. And I think it would be very difficult to do anything with like any significant blending like even my florals would probably be a little bit hard to do. Let's now try some pit pens. So the pit pens have India ink inside them. They are not water soluble so they don't reactivate after and I love these. <laughs> I've got a set of 30 and they have one fine liner side and they also have a brush nib side. More times than not I'm using the brush nib side. So let's kind of see how that works. So this is on the on the gessoed side. 
and this is on the non gessoed side. Not gonna lie to you, friends, I think gessoed side is winning. Even like, I don't know, maybe user experience as well, like it's just nicer. So again, this is the artist pit pen. So usually it's not water soluble. That being said, because we are laying it down on gesso, it appears that it is. It's giving us like longer working time. And let's see, same for the pinky one. If we compare it to the non gessoed side, it's not moving. <laughs> ah, gosh. Let us continue with the water soluble elements and bring out the Neo Color tools. So, as you can see, like you can see the tooth of the sketchbook quite prominently on here. If I dip my Neo Color 2 in water and then go over that, and that's a little bit nicer. It's covering the tooth more, it's a nice rich color. It's eating up quite a bit of the Neo Color 2, but at least it's getting the color down. Now let's again try it on the non gessoed side. And I've dipped it in water and it's a bit better than without water but as you can see the water just gets absorbed super quickly so it goes back to its kind of dry texture almost immediately. Let me dip this one in water as well. So as you can see when it's dipped in water you get more colour payoff but it does eat up your new colour too more. I guess it almost feels like you know, drawing on sandpaper. At least if you move it around, then you're almost like sharpening your Neo Color 2 <laughs> without any of it going to waste. All right, let's try and reactivate it. So yeah, the marks are getting reactivated, which is good. So the color payoff won't obviously be as strong as just wetting the Neo Color 2, same as if it was on paper, but you are able to reactivate the marks on the gessoed sketchbook. Let's try the non gessoed sketchbook. Yay, success. You're able to reactivate it here too. Obviously the water is getting picked up super quick. So I have to go back and forth. And not as vibrant, but it does reactivate. I'm not enjoying <laughs> doing it on the non gessoed side. It just feels like a lot of work just because it doesn't move, it doesn't blend. As soon as it dries, it stays. It is just not giving me much to work with. Now let's try some acrylic ink. Starting to get absorbed on the non gessoed side. Let's spread it. I mean, same as before, able to spread it to a certain extent and then it kind of stops, the mark remains there and the color is dull. <laughs> on the gessoed side, the mark, so it kind of just sat on top of the sketchbook, if that makes sense, on top of the cover. So the mark has disappeared in terms of like, you know, where I put down the color, that's gone. And the color is nice and vibrant. The one thing I would say is that, um, I don't know, water control is a thing on the gessoed side. Like I get Bloom-esque, kind of um, effects when I get carried away with adding the water. That was not my intention, whoops. <laughs> I wanted to not have a mark, but that isn't gonna work. Just put a little bit here, That's spreading nicely, put a little bit here. Yeah, so water control does feel like a little bit tricky 
on the so bloom i'm not getting blooms on the non-gessoed side but on the gessoed side i uh, they're not like they're not exactly blooms but it's essentially like because everything is drying at different speeds i'm getting harsh lines where i don't want them and the way to do that to get rid of that is just to almost reactivate all the colors it basically feels like when you're doing a watercolor painting and you haven't let it dry completely and you add something wet hence why i'm calling them blooms i'm just going to add a little bit more purple here I think I mentioned this in my previous video as well. I just feel that the the acrylic inks just work so nicely on the covers. They just, and I also don't feel like I'm wasting as much. I can't explain it. I almost feel like it takes quite a lot of pigment of gouache or watercolor to get on the covers and to get a nice effect. Whereas with the acrylic inks, a little drop goes a long way, especially on the gessoed cover. I also feel like they're a lot brighter and more vibrant. So this is like my my acrylics that I mixed myself. And they're a mixture of acrylic paints as well as um, acrylic inks. And I've made a whole video about it on my Kofi. So if you haven't seen that, I will link it for you just in case because it's just fun to be able to make your own colors and put them in pens or bottles and just use them in your art. Oddly enough, I don't have that many purple pencils, but there's a little bit of like, do you see what I mean about pencils in that you can do it, but then you get so much grit that it, it kind of feels a bit pointless. As I do this sketchbook, the one that has no gesso on it, what I'm thinking is I'm going to have to go over all of this with gesso. <laughs> I just, and then start again and do like another cover. It just looks, I just don't like it. It's not vibrant. It's so patchy and it's just not an enjoyable experience. Whereas with the gesso, it was or is, continues to be. What I may check is, or what we will check now, I guess, is how that compares to adding watercolor ground. Another kind of drawback is that the gesso, I guess, is like an acrylic film. So the materials do tend to just sit on top of there. So you do get more working time, but it just sometimes feels like painting on plastic. Let's try and paint on the side that has some watercolour ground and see if that's made a significant difference. So the watercolour ground on here is right at the top. So this basically has gesso and then on top of the gesso we have watercolour ground. Let's see how that behaves with watercolour. Perhaps a little bit more workable. A little bit less just sitting on top. So this is just gesso. So just gesso and on the watercolour ground. It's a bit brighter on the just gesso. And you can see the texture in both. This is the just watercolour ground with no gesso underneath. That actually is quite nice. Let's see, does it remain workable? So it's not workable, but at least it's not drying super, super, super fast like it was before. Just to clarify, up here we have gesso first and then we have watercolour ground. Down here, just gesso. And here we have just watercolour ground on top of the cover. And this atrocity on the bottom here is just on the cover. And here is just gesso. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> that looks really nice on the side that is gesso plus watercolour nice on the side that is just watercolour ground on top of the thing and as you can see it's just it does work for 
it is more workable. So on this side where we put it down, on the side where it's literally just the cover, where we put it down is where it stayed, it didn't move at all. Whereas here, it kind of moves and gives you a bit more working time, but it also does kind of get absorbed into the canvas, if that makes sense. Let's see how the pit pens do. So this is pit pen on watercolor ground and gesso. Still feels the same. And gesso, this is on watercolor ground. It's workable, whereas it was not before. It remains workable, like long after. And let's try the Neo Color 2s. So I'm dipping them in water kind of sinking into that texture but going further than it does when it doesn't have any watercolour ground and then here is pretty much the same as it was with the gesso. So this is acrylic ink so you can see that it, it's spreading a lot more on this side. On the side that has watercolour ground it starts to spread almost immediately and it's just workable. So it is a lot nicer, I'm not gonna lie, for wet mediums than using nothing. And then on the side that has watercolor ground and gesso, again, that's really nice. But equally, it's also nice on the side that just has gesso. So I think it will come down to personal preference, but if you've tried this and you had issues and you didn't use any gesso, you didn't use any watercolour ground, then I suspect that that might be why. Because if, honestly, if the first time that I had tried to do my own covers, I hadn't used any gesso and I had this kind of patchy experience that I'm having now, I wouldn't have tried this again. It can also be helpful to have the sketchbook up like this, almost like in a triangle form. And the benefit of that is that then you can do the spine and let it dry like this. And you get in all the corners. And so I start off by having it flat, as you saw, and then after I have it in this shape. So I guess the question that we are all asking and the answer that we're waiting for is which is better? And in honesty, I think it will come down to personal preference as well as what you are using and what you have available. The thing that I can say with certainty for me was that using nothing on the cover, you did the worst results, whether you used watercolour, gouache, acrylics, um, <laughs> pit pens it didn't matter it just wasn't workable and it wasn't an enjoyable experience um then when it came to watercolor ground versus gesso the key difference that I found was that the gesso um almost creates this you know plasticky barrier so you get lots of working time which comes with the pros of being able to mix a range of different mediums for ages but it comes with the con of getting some odd water effects things taking a really long time to dry um, and materials just kind of laying on top of the gesso um, rather than sinking into the tooth of the canvas itself so for that reason you almost get like better coverage if you're using the watercolor ground on the cover directly and that is what i am doing here so you see less of the white specks of the cover you are able to blend but you do get less working time and less blending capability than if you're painting on the gesso itself the colors are more vibrant when compared to painting on the cover directly however not as vibrant as if you are painting on the gesso alone one option that i think was complete overkill and i wouldn't recommend is using the watercolor ground as well as the gesso together um admittedly i didn't wait for the watercolor ground to fully cure when i was doing this experiment but what i found was that it didn't make the experience more enjoyable than just using watercolor ground or just using gesso because the gesso so it kind of slows down the drying time of anything it um it remained wet and as you can kind of see from the top of where I'm painting now you can just see more of the brush strokes so each brush stroke that you took moved both the watercolor ground as well as whatever medium you were adding to it so I don't think that this is an option that I would recommend especially given that watercolor ground is not cheap <laughs> so I think 
based on all of this, that's what I mean by it comes down to personal preference. I personally will continue using the Gesso. I think more so because of the price considerations, especially given how expensive watercolor ground can be. However, one of the things that would probably top the watercolor ground over the Gesso is that I didn't get any of those harsh lines forming when I was using the watercolor ground. So all in all, it was probably a nicer experience on the watercolor ground, but I preferred the overall overall end results on the gesso. I guess the final consideration is whether you need to protect the cover, varnish it, go over it with anything. I have had the covers as is for the past few weeks and they haven't transferred on anything. They haven't had any weird effects. So in theory, you can leave them as is if you want. However, when I first tried this, I used the PVA glue and I actually prefer the finish of having the PVA. It's slightly shiny and it looks more finished, like it's actually a printed cover the colors are brighter and it does look more professional so i haven't done it to these sketchbooks yet but i am going to because i prefer that look so this one here is with watercolor ground directly onto the cover and then over here we go just on the cover with no with no watercolor ground, no gesso, no prep, using watercolor, neocolor twos, acrylic inks, and some. And I use that on both of these. So here we have the cover that has gesso. On this side, we have the cover that has gesso and the watercolor ground. And I don't know if you can see, I think one of the clear differences is that you can see the brush strokes a lot more prominently when you go with the watercolor ground on top of the gesso. What kind of effect are you looking for? What kind of supplies are you going to use? And between that, pick either the gesso or the watercolor ground. If you are still watching, then you are a real MVP and I really, really, really appreciate you and I would love to know more about you. So let me know that you're still watching by telling me what colour you would paint your own everyday sketchbook. This sketchbook that I decorated is actually one of my absolute favourites and if you are curious to see all the art that is inside the purple sketchbook, then be sure to check out this video next. And here is another video that is one of my favourites and I hope that you will enjoy too. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.